YouTube, welcome back to my channel. I'm your host TKK and we are back with another video guys. This is the 77 inch Sony A95L 2023 king of the TV. That's my opinion. It's got nothing to do with a shootout or uh, anyone else's thoughts. Uh, for me, this was the creme de la creme, the best of the best in all totality that you could get. And uh, a popular question that I've seen, what happened to this TV? Well, nothing really happened to it. So we're in my living room and uh, I want to bring you some expectations for this video, okay? Timestamps definitely down in the description. You can use the track bar to kind of skim through, get to a point you want to be at. This type of video that I'm making tonight I think is important because uh, it leads me to be able to execute exactly what my thought process is. Um, I don't make a lot of reviews with just reviews. It's more over the time, right? So this TV is going to be going bye-bye and not away from my household, but it's going to be going away from the center stage pretty soon. So we're in my living room. Within this video, I'll show you kind of an overview of the living room, and I've kind of done that before, um, but we're going to be making some physical adjustments to what's in this room and how I'm going to try to bring myself, be closer to the TV or the new TV that's going to be coming by uh, just kind of rearranging some things. So first things first, I did make this area to be very much on purpose. Uh, we've got a feature color wall. I painted it because I knew the TV was gonna be here and I was extremely delighted with this and I've been really enjoying this experience, okay? Uh, we've went from the S95C being on this wall to the A95L and so now we're gonna be changing some things. So I'm going to be um, merging some furniture pieces in my home to try to bring a little bit more enjoyment to another piece of the house um, but you know we're gonna arrange some things around get the TV in a different space and uh, we're gonna have some discussion about this TV how it's been holding up for me and uh, what's to come we're gonna get all that going right after this intro all right so as I said welcome back to my channel guys the first thing I want to discuss is audio now listen I'm not the biggest audio file I don't own a theater room. I've actually, in, in a prior home that I owned, I did have a dedicated theater room. That's not the case here. I don't have the type of space. My next move will be my best move. So whatever house I buy in the future, I'm gonna make sure that I have the type of space to have me a dedicated setup because I've, I've been just drooling over the thought of having a, a, a TV or a screen larger than 100 inch with a dedicated premium audio system. It just doesn't make a lot of sense for me to do that with so much open ear um, in the area that I have right now. And uh, I'm not willing to sacrifice like my game room or anything like that for a dedicated experience. Uh, but what I do have is a 5.2 system. We've got all clips here. Maybe I'll card in when I got this stuff unboxing. I did a brief review and I've been enjoying it. This isn't my first time dealing with clips. I had an all um, clip system back in 2014 in 2015 where I actually in my older house I tore down my garage and turned it into a theater room so we had the ceiling speakers and we had six towers believe it or not we had six of these same towers the older versions with four subwoofers and a center speaker so we had some rocking audio that was in that room this is much more subtle and I've been enjoying it but one of the things that I've been told by many of people uh, I want to give a shout out to my dog Tony um, subscriber friend someone I can talk to, as well as many others that have been on the channel telling me that, hey, man, I should consider changing my audio uh, setup. Now, this sounds good to me, and I've heard people say, hey, if you change it, it can sound better. The change that people have told me is to remove the left and right towers to be closer to the TV and to move the subwoofers to be closer into the corners. So we're going to be moving this TV and this setup from this wall, and we're going to be going into uh, another wall that's in the same room. And within me doing that, I'm going to change that. Now, I'm going to be sitting closer to the TV. The transition that I'm going to be making is going to be going from right here to right here. Now, depending on how long you've been following my channel, when I actually started making this type of content three years ago, when I got the LG C1 in 77 inch, I actually put the TV right here in front of this window. This window goes to my backyard to like a pond. And, uh, you know, there's not a ton of light that comes in it, but there's a little bit of glare here and there. 
And so my thought back then three years ago was when I got the 77 inch C1, put it in front of the window. Because if you put it in front of the window, then you totally get rid of any type of glare. And uh, it's also gonna put me in a position where I'm sitting much closer to the TV versus where I am right now. So just to give you a look, and I've showed this before, this is my sweet spot and cascading over to where the TV is, we're about 16 feet, right? Now, I've told you guys before that I've got other seats in the house, um, you know, like this couch right here, just gonna swivel you around a little bit. So it's more so about getting the family all engaged versus just myself. So what I'm attempting to do here is to go back to how I had things three years ago. My sweet spot that I just showed you is actually gonna be on this wall and the TV that is now 77, which will be 83 in the future, it's gonna to go to right there. So when I measured this space out, head to feet, we're talking about maybe, maybe nine feet, okay? Much, much closer for me to get that immersion. So not only is this 77 inch going to look a lot larger, but when I do get this 83 inch G4 that's gonna be coming pretty soon, that's gonna be ridiculous, okay? So this is kind of the idea so far. And uh, you know, again, within this vlog, we're just gonna break things down and uh, continue on with it. So what's gonna happen to the A95L? Okay, this TV has been masterful and I've loved it. This TV is actually gonna go into my bedroom. It's gonna replace what I currently have in my bedroom, which is a 65 inch A95K. Now I do like watching a little bit of TV, not even a little bit, I like watching TV before it's time for bed. Um, this TV is gonna go on its uh, stand and uh, it's gonna provide me a nice immersive experience before it's bedtime. This TV has been just absolutely remarkable. It's done everything that I've needed it to do, okay? Um, I've been able to play PC gaming, console gaming. I've been able to watch, you know, a plethora of different uh, platforms of content from Plex to Disney Plus to everything else. I haven't had any major hiccups with this thing. I've done some competitive gaming. I played hours and hours and hours of Street Fighter. Um, I've even got down on some Tekken 8. Tekken 8 recently came out not too long ago, and I've been learning that game with my son. We're doing a little bit of play on that with my gaming channel. That link is in the description if you're interested in checking that out. More content to come there. But the TV all in all has just been great. Input latency is pretty low. We're in a space where Sony figured out that, you know, they need to be competitive with the gaming uh, side of things. And so, you know, they do have a lot of, you know, features like the game optimizer and things like that that do put you in a great position. And while it's not perfect, there are some things that are missing. It's good enough in that regard. But in all totality, just for everything that this is, this is ultimately an area that I use to watch TV when I'm eating dinner or just trying to like, you know, sit down or, um, you know, just reading a little bit. I just want something planned. This is kind of like that area where everybody can congregate and just can kind of be together and have that sense of togetherness if we're watching some content, depending on what the content is and if it's rated from something that I want my children to watch. But I've been enjoying the TV. I know I don't do a lot of direct reviews, but let's consider this kind of sort of a review. Um, I didn't want to kind of clickbait this thing for the A95L, but it's been a great TV. And the only reason that I'm getting rid of the TV in this space is just because I'm going to welcome something that's going to be larger and it's going to be a little bit more innovative and it's going to give me more of a all purpose, you know, experience that I might be looking for. So there's not much that the TV's lacking, but the TV does only have two HDMI 2.1s. Now, that's not a big, big deal because I do have a Denon receiver that does offer me three ports using the one connection on the TV for a, uh, eARC. Um, I do get three ports that allow me to be able to go into 120 hertz with 4K. Now, the G4 is gonna give me four ports and it's going to be able to produce up to 144 hertz. So this means I'll be able to bring a PC back into this area, which I have removed. Uh, probably going to do something around like RTX 3080, maybe 3090. I don't need too much in the end game. It's just going to be for some standard, you know, SDR games and some modern titles. But if I want to play something with the higher refresh rate, the G4 is going to open it up for me. And again, it's going to be larger. So we're going from 77 to 83. So that immersion level is just going to be there. And that's why we're going to be removing the A95L from this space. Ultimately, though, like I said, it's just been a great TV. And if you got this TV, I think that you did a really good job, right? So that's been a big question I've been asked. Like G4, since people I've told now with the, the, the recent um, podcast style content that I made on my desk talking about me seeing the G4 and my thoughts on it, what about that versus this TV? 
it's not really one of those conversations that I like to have saying it's going to be this or that. This TV is, I mean, I can't really describe what it is. To begin, you have to understand QD OLED is just totally different than white OLEDs in the space of where you're going to get colors and the type of brightness that you're getting. This TV has produced a level of HDR blast that's just very much so on purpose with a lot of the content that I've watched that is HDR. Pair that with the fact that I do have a Blu-ray player on it, so watching movies and things of that sort like that's been on physical media, it's just been a lot of pop. This TV's got a lot of great sharp 3D-like effect to it, and uh, you know the colors are just ridiculous. They're, they're just very much so on purpose and where they need to be. The uh, MLA from LG is going to offer me white. So ironically, this scene that we're looking at, you're going to get more of a magenta on your whites if you're uh, watching a QD OLED, which they're going to be much more pure on the MLA 83-inch uh, um, G4 when I get that. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like enjoying this, but I'm just, I'm, I'm the type of person that I am. I'm just looking for something new, something bigger. And uh, I'm going to be able to enjoy this because I've been enjoying the 65A95K. So bit, putting a bigger, brighter, better TV in my bedroom is going to, you know, give me that kick again. So I'm going to be able to enjoy it both ways, man. All right, guys. So hopefully this answers a little bit of, you know, your questions about this TV or the G4. I think it really just depends, um, you know, what you're looking for and what type of investment you made with this TV. Now, we know this TV was super expensive. It was five grand U.S. dollars in the 77 inch. And it was hard to find at first for a long time. Um, some of the biggest retailers that you can get this TV from didn't have it in stock for a long time. Um, I got it off the gate. Um, and so, you know, I've been enjoying it ever since and I plan on enjoying this thing for many many years this isn't a TV I don't think that I'll be parting with for quite some time as well as the 65 a95 k2 um, you know I'm gonna pull that and move that to another area to try to get some more enjoyment out of it also but I can't say that you know I would take this TV or the G4 you know it just depends like I said before on my channel man I think every TV every specific model has its own um, use case and uh, way that we should try to enjoy and uh, you know for me it's going to be uh, me going to something that's going to be a little bit more uh, well-rounded I can say the G4 and also larger right um, and I do welcome the MLA and, and everything that LG has brought me you know so far what I'm enjoying from the C4 I look forward to getting from this so this is our conclusions I love this TV it's great and uh, I got a lot of work to get done. Now, I'm going to be off from work the next couple of days. I'm actually filming this during the evening time right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get this content put up and uh, get it to you so you can enjoy it the next day. If you enjoyed the discussion, go ahead and leave a thumb up. Maybe leave a comment. Let's have some engagement. And I'll be sure to bring you um, a finished product. You know, my next video is probably going to be with this area being changed. And we'll go into talking about some audio and some different things like that. I'm trying to open this up so we can get more discussions going, but I appreciate your time for listening to this video, and I hope to catch you on the next video. Peace, God bless, and as I always say, man, max love.